Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Road to Glory career mode. Now, today, we're going to be taking on Atletico Madrid yet again. If you missed the last episode, definitely go and check it out because this won't make much sense. But if you did catch it, this is how the game's panned out then. So, we first took on CSKA and we fell to a 2-0 defeat at home in the Champions League. Disappointing, to say the least. Following on from that, we moved into the game against Brighton which we won by a goal to nil. So we were able to bounce back and get a win in the Premier League. We then took on Liverpool, drawing nil-nil in the process, not playing very well at all. And then we had the important one against Atletico, in which we managed to scrape a one-nil victory. So the Champions League group went from being really good to bad to okay. <laughs> so we currently top it, but it is extremely close in that one. And we face Atletico Madrid again today in the fourth game of our group stage. So we're going to see how that one plays out. But first up, we have Everton away. Forest Green in the round of 16 of the Carabao Cup, which I most likely will be simming, depending if we are at home or away. Wolves and then Atletico Madrid. So that is the plan of action today. We'll see how we do in terms of performances and games and such, because at the moment, I, I don't know how we stand with this team. Obviously, winning the league last year was a great achievement. But for now, I don't know how we stand. I don't know how good our team is on the... Champions League level, we've only played three games and we can't really tell too much from that. So far, winning two of those by a goal to nil and losing the other one 2 nil. So it's hard to tell at this stage. We just have to keep grinding away and sort of try and find out where we stand on that stage. But we will see in a few moments' time. We take on Everton right now, away from home. They're fourth in the league. We'll see how we play. A little news article for you all to bring your attention to it as well. We are hoping to break Doc, it says. And that was on the 15th of October. Um, he's had a few goalless games, which I'm not too worried about because I know the quality he's got. And also Klopp, when we played against Liverpool in our f last Premier League game, had a lot of praise for McNamee. So, yeah, I mean, Simeone as well were praising us when it came to us against Atletico. He says he reckons I've done a good job and he's got us playing some good football. I, you know what, Diego? Mad respect to you, mate. Thank you for your kind words. I mean, we went on to beat you, so... You can understand why. However, it is time then for the game against Everton. I think the side is pretty much going to be full strength, but I'm not going to be starting Kieran Tierney at left attacking midfield like we did against Atletico. It seemed to work, but Barbe is going to come back into the team. And also, we should have Shane McNeil back fully fit. There he is. Alenia scored the goal that mattered in that one, so I feel like I have to keep him in the side, which means Kubo will have to start on the bench and make do with that for now. Um, but like I said, I can't replace Alenia. He scored that goal that counted and was a difference maker, and Kubo doesn't necessarily perform when out wide, so I don't want to force him to have to play in that position. So that is the side we're going to go with for Everton, and we will see just what kind of result we can get. Having won against Brighton and then drawn against Liverpool, that was okay. Four points from six, undefeated. So I'm not sure what I'd accept here at Goodison Park. We'll just see. They are, they are doing well. You know, it's not like if we were to lose this game, it's a surprise. Everton are a good team, and they're having a decent season after nine games. So... It's going to be tough, but I think we play the way we know we can. We should, fingers crossed, get a result here. And we are ready then for kickoff from Goodison Park. I accidentally skipped past the team selection, so we don't know exactly what's going on with Everton's side. We will see who they've got by working out in game. Sometimes the best way to do it. Then you're not putting any thoughts into your mind about who they have and who is their good players. I've seen William Carvalho, though, so a decent CDM. Side Gankov in the team, too, as he's touched the ball. Sigurdsson, so... Yeah, a couple of decent players, players that can cost us if we give them time. But I think ultimately, I would say, personally, I believe we've got probably the better side here. That's just my opinion, though, because obviously it doesn't matter if they go on to win the game. Clearly, I'd be wrong. But in my opinion, we do have the better lineup as we steal back the ball here. Barbe, though, can't go forward. Also, Sayed Kalazinac at left back, the former Arsenal man. Interesting choice of team, and he's going to be a strong contender at that left back spot to try and beat. I'm trying to bring the ball and control in a dangerous area. Luckily, we get away with it. Ferrari in that cam roll as he has been playing. Barbe will flick that on. Get the 1-2 from Tim Weir as well. And immediately, we are in with a potential chance here. If Barbe can carry forward, which he can. Barbe inside the box. Shoots. And I was going to say scores, but he doesn't. He puts it wide. And that's a big chance for the young man. This is where we need to improve. We've got to improve Barbe's finishing. If we can, he's going to be a force. He can get into these areas, but it's the finish that lets him down. It was a really nicely worked chance as well. Flicking the ball off to Weyer, getting it back on the return. And he's another one who needs to find a goal, Tim Weyer. You saw in the news article about breaking the duck that he's currently in. But Clorentine Barbe in that position has got to do better for me. Should be hitting the target there. 
And the issue is as well, if that falls to McNeil, that's in the back of the net without fail. And then you're going to find Weyer. Weyer on the edge of Everton's penalty area. We'll find Ferrari. Not a lot really to work off at the moment. Everton staying tight, compact and strong back there. Not allowing us any openings at all as we find Barbe. Barbe is going to wait for the run. Coming in from Kieran Tierney. That wonder of a left peg, remember? Again, attempting to put that cross in, but it's going to be a corner ball. And it looks like Grimsby are settling into this game a little bit now and beginning to find their feet as we find Barbe edge of the area again. I was going to shoot, but then I remembered about first shot that he put in. Chris Lucas there found it. A really good area. What a save, Weyer. Oh, no. Tim Weyer. Would you believe it? Has missed an open goal. He's not going to get many more chances to break his dock than that. Well, I should say easier chances than that. Oh, Tim, Tim, Tim. It was Chris Sukasev who caused the problem. In that position, got the ball back from, I think, Peterson, was it? Had the shot, well saved by Pickford, and way a goal gaping has somehow failed to hit the target. To be fair, I don't want to believe it as Elena carries us forward and finds McNeil. Shane McNeil into a really good position. McNeil pulls it on the left foot still. Now Weyer inside the box again. And again, we'll get the shot away. And Pickford will save it. Corner ball to Grimsby Town, who are asking all sorts of questions. But so far for Everton, they've stood up to them. As the ball luckily finds its way through to Barbe. Now Sukasev. Peterson, not the man you really want in this area. We're going to find Elena nonetheless. Elena shot. Oh, what a finish. That is how it's done, Tim. Elena gets his second in as many games. Scored the winner against Atletico and gets the opener here against Everton. And our dominance pays off. We needed that to go in because you just felt like it was just not going to be our day after we had so much in Everton's half here. And eventually we have found the breakthrough. Nice ball from Peterson into Alenu, who on the turn has somehow beaten Pickford with a brilliant strike. And that was you guys because before I wasn't even going to play him in that camera roll. But you guys said to do him there. He's got better shooting than Ferrari, of course. And he's certainly coming up with the goods recently. Elena does it again for us as he celebrates with Peterson. And we have the lead here. 33 minutes in. Number 32. Elena scores his third Premier League goal of the season. <sighs> Weyer, you've been let off the hook there because you missed that opening goal. That was poor. Everton now have actually not done terribly when it comes to actually uh, trying to craft a chance themselves. Defensively, though, they've... Not got the ground running. And I said this in my, my previous career mode episode with Schalke. It feels like teams you come up against on all the difficulty always look to sit back against you. They never look to come at you immediately from the offset. That's a shot blocked. Fly Barbe in the box. And it's an Everton corner. Bit of defending to do for the first time in the match now. Are we going to be able to do it though? First time of asking. Goes up in the air. It's one in the box and it's out for a goal kick. And at half time then, it is Grimsby who lead here at Goodison Park. Everton trying to get themselves back on level terms before we went into this with a couple of chances. Nothing clear cut for them really yet though. We've had a couple of chances. Way has opened goal, Barbe shot. But it is just the single goal from Alenia that makes the difference. And captain Chris Sukasev on the ball for the first time really there. His shot actually was the, the bit that caused the issue, wasn't it? So, I mean, yeah, you got to say if he'd have put that away. Captain's goal, how about that? It would have been great from a score, wouldn't it? I'll tell you what, Chris is going to go down as one of those players for me that will always stick in my mind from my series. I've got Riera Canadel, Ollie Hill from the Hartlepool days. Chris Sukasev is going to be probably the one from this series. Um, and McNeil, of course. But yeah, it's, it's, just, it's mad to see because genuinely, Chris Sukasev is just a beast. Here we go, though. Everton chance. And it's a great block in the box. I believe it was Kieran Tierney. Sliding along the floor to stop that. Alenia going to come off and Kubo going to come on. Make that change happen. If Weyer can't break his dock, then maybe we have to start Kubo up front. That could be something we try to do. I'm not sure I've ever used Kubo. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Whoa, what the heck just happened? I thought, genuinely, I thought McNamee had it easy. And then the ball just didn't go to McNamee. He went to Coleman and he put it wide. Oh, my heart sank. Back to the point, <laughs> I've not actually used Kubo as a striker, so maybe we try that if Weyer can't get it on the score sheet. But then again, we need to try and get Weyer a goal. Maybe if it's, uh, if it's an away game and we're forced to play against Forest Green, maybe we start him in that one and try and get him some confidence potentially because missing an open goal of that magnitude is not what we have come to expect from Tim Weyer. Is Kubo going to get a nice little run on the go here? See, Weyer didn't even make that run. Usually he would have done. And the ball still hasn't gone out, which means those changes that we had scheduled still haven't come on. And finally, the ball will leave the field of play. So now we get the changes to make way. There we go. Also a change by the looks of things for Everton. Eric Dyer seems to be coming on for Cavallio. Well, uh, uh, yeah, it is Eric Dyer as well. I got it right. 
So uh, I'm not sure about that change because they need a goal still. So bringing on a CDM doesn't really change that. Unless they think they can get it out with the players they've already got. It's Chris Sukasev. Look at that from the captain. Big Chris. He's just, he's just, a, oh, he's a machine. He's a machine, is Chris. He's probably my favourite player. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I know, I know I gave you guys a poll recently and you guys, oh, oh. Hold on. Hold that thought. Is he only trying to go over? Barbe steps in. Good win back. Gwen Doozy will do the bits. I know I gave you guys the poll recently as we've end full time with a 1-0 win. And you guys voted for McNeil, but for me, Big Chris has to be up there. He just has to be. It was nervy. Kingsley Coma's effort towards the back end when I thought McNamee should have dealt with it. Um, could have changed it. Match facts show you it was a very, very close game. Separated by the single goal coming in from Elena, who yet again gets another match winner for us. It's brilliant. Just found a beast in the youth scouts. Henry Brown, potential 83 to 94. Not sure what his overall is going to be, but it's probably going to be pretty good considering the fact that he already has that as a potential. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure where I'm sending my scouts next. I'm not even sure if I am going to send my scouts again because we've got so many youth players that have come through who uh, I'm actually not sure about right now. And it is a way to Forest Green, which is making me think about playing this one. I think I am actually going to have to play it because I don't want to risk us losing a sim away from home and it should be a fairly simple victory. I'm not sure I should call it that, but... I've called it that now, so, yeah, I mean, I can't change it. I have called it a simple victory now. i kind of got to go and do it, you know what I mean? Okay, then, let's go and get this. Let's get the win, bring it home. You can see as well, I've switched around the team, so we're going to go with this one. Watson starts in goal, Timon, Oxford, Bartley, and Big Chris, our captain at right back. Michalis and Jesus as the two holding midfielders. Robert Cox, Eggerstein, and Rodney Janssen up front. I know I said I'd start Weyer, potentially to give him a little bit of confidence if he can score. But I think I'm going to bring him on rather than start him. In fact, actually, would it be a better idea to start him and then bring him off, potentially? I think we'll do that, yeah. Maybe get him some confidence, try and score him a goal or two in the first 45. And if he can't do that, then we'll uh, probably swap him for Janssen and give Janssen the run out at half time. So, probably not going to be a better chance for where to score than now. Because a lot of the games we'll be featuring in this season are going to be against teams which are sort of Champions League and above. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, this ground looks very, very recognisable, doesn't it? <laughs> it's kind of mad when you consider that this is exactly the same pretty much as what our home ground is, Blundell Park, even though Blundell Park, of course, doesn't exist in the game. We had to take Town Park and rename it. So, effectively, it looks like we're playing at exactly the same ground as what ours is. Player to watch, Tavon Campbell got two goals in his previous match for Forest Green. So we'll see if he can make the difference for them tonight. But I'm going to be honest, when this team pops up, I'm expecting to know absolutely nobody. And here is their team then. And again, I go back to my point, I know absolutely nobody. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. Um, I think it's safe to say, if we get knocked out here, then it's an upset. So no disrespect to Forest Green. I'm sure they'll put up a good fight, but we should come out of this one with the victory. We'll... we'll We'll hopefully be saying that in 90 minutes anyway. Roberts already looking over the top, sending Ethan Cox away. Cox brings the ball down, a little flick over his head as well, already showcasing some of the ability that he's got. Bit of showboating for the fans as well. Eggerstein through to Weyer. Weyer immediately, and Weyer scores inside six minutes. I said we were needing to get him some confidence, and that might just do it. Only six minutes in, the first shot of the game, and Tim Weyer converts it. That is more like it, Tim. Get in there. Bottom corner as well. I mean, a little bit of showboating as well from Ethan Cox at the beginning. Not necessary, but, you know, you've got to throw it in there every now and again. And that is the finish from Tim Weir we were expecting. Much more like the Tim we're used to seeing. Not the one that misses open goals like he did against Everton. Great finish, Tim. Weir. Here goes Robert for number two now to Grimsby. Robert pulls it back on the right foot. Gets the shot away and good save from the Forest Green Rovers goalkeeper. I thought that was going to be two. Robert caught on the right foot. Has got a five-star weak foot, remember, guys. It's actually not even a save. It's a block by their captain. What a block. Sensational stuff from their skipper. Oh, it's in. It's 2-0. I don't even know who's got this, but it's 2-0. Who is it? Is it Eggerstein? I think it's Eggerstein. Yeah, it is. Forest Green Rovers, nil. Grimsby, two from the corner. Eggerstein heads in after the keeper comes out and gets nowhere near this. And it is 2-0 Grimsby, and that should do it for us, I believe. I mean, we're still going to play this out because... You know, we could get more in terms of this one. But I'm not going to celebrate the goals overly because I don't believe I need to do that. So, 2-0 uh, Grimsby. And it's a nice goal by all accounts. Here is Robert again looking down the left-hand side for number three. 
Robert ghosting forward and finding the pass inside. Eggerstein shot. Well dealt with by the defender, in all honesty, because I think the goalkeeper was beaten there. He seemed like he was anyway. I mean, at this stage, Forest Green just can't... They can't get the ball under control in the advanced area, because as soon as they do, the likes of Chris Sucker 7 other people... Oh, what a goal! Oh, my gosh! What a goal! That is commentator's curse written in a script. I was just literally saying they can't get the ball under control. And then the next thing I know, they've just hit a worldie. Their number nine is... Oh, wow, what a goal. And if they don't go on to win the game, they can safely say they'll have the best goal of the game. Because that is tremendous. What an effort. Holy. Just before half time as well. Take a bow. And I was going to say we safely go in at half time at 2 0 up, but I can't say that because it's now 2 1. And that goal does actually mean that Forest Green are actually back in the game, even though we've dominated for the majority of that first half. Tremendous strike, I tell you that right now. So, Way is going to come off. He's got his goal. Janssen going to come on. Fresh legs up front. I think we'll probably be able to see this one out. I don't expect us to, to drop this now, given the circumstances. But that goal shows us that there is something about Forest Green. Even if maybe they didn't show it uh, that much in that first half. So we still have to be careful. Here is Robert. Wins it back. Finds Eggerstein. Eggerstein for three. And that just sums it up really. They do a moment of quality and then they're back to doing that. Lost it in a really poor area. We actually started with us losing the ball to be fair. And then we won it straight back. And then... At that stage, they just didn't concentrate. Eggerstein gets in, makes it 3-1 Grimsby for his second of the match too. And uh, that should do it for us. I mean, there is the, the little thing I showed you. Robert wins it straight back, plays Eggerstein. He's composed, just, dry, just drives it past the keeper. 3-1. Jesus to Eggerstein for the hat-trick now as he goes through on goal. Eggerstein chips the goalkeeper. Has it got the legs? No, it hasn't. They clear it off the line. <laughs> Full credit to Forest Green, man. They are they are playing their hearts out here. Like that that could have been three, and we could have had Eggerstein his hat trick, and they could have pretty much given up. But they are actually up for this. I'm not even gonna lie, they are up for this. That is that is tremendous defending. Hold on a second. Oh no, he's in. Forest Green back in the game. What am I doing? I need to seriously sort this out. The fact of the matter is, we shouldn't be 3-2. Like, I swear they've had two shots. Apart from the header they got right at the beginning, which I can't even count really because it wasn't that great. But on a serious note, we've allowed them twice to get in this position. And then... Oh, it's just Watson, 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 Watson. <laughs> Forest Green 2, Grimsby Town 3. I don't know how on earth there's only one goal in this game because I feel like we've pretty much controlled more, most of it, but it doesn't matter if you're controlling it if you're not grabbing the goals, you know. Here is Eggerstein. Trying to get us going on the front foot. Janssen needs to make the run, and he does. Rodney Janssen sent through from Eggerstein. Janssen bearing down on goal. Still Rodney Janssen, and still... What is wrong with our strikers at times in this game? On a serious note, that is his stronger foot inside the penalty area, and he has failed to hit the target. That is unacceptable, Rodney Hansen. Unacceptable. Good old Rob finding a way forward again. Still Rob, and still Rob, and he's got it, and he's in towards the box of Forest Green Rovers, and he's down under the challenge, and it's a penalty kick for Grimsby Town to see the tie out. Mills goes to ground, and Robert picks up the penalty. I mean, it's pretty silly by all accounts from the Forest Green defender. But to the truth be told, it's been a lot closer than it should have been here. As it looks like it's Robert who's going to be taking this penalty kick for us. Is he the best penalty kick taker we've got? 72. He is. However, Eggerstein is on a hat trick. So I am going to give it to Eggerstein and try and get that hat trick. Because it's... <sighs> what is happening? What is happening? He's had one cleared off the line and now a penalty save. Uh, it's, it's, what? Ethan Cox's corner towards the mixer. Punched out by the goalkeeper. Rhys Oxford wins the flick down though. Goes towards Eggerstein who's on that hat-trick still. We'll find Robert. Robert keeps hold. I mean, 
I just, I don't know. I don't know why, that how this is 3-2. We should have just put this game to bed about half an hour ago, really. And that's put it lightly. Last couple of minutes then, until we are seeing this game out. And that is poor from Josh Timon. You know what, right? Josh Timon has had an absolute nightmare today. He's not played well at all. I don't know why. He's just not done what you'd expect of Josh Timon, really. Eggerstein got Janssen still making a move through the middle. Janssen pulls it onto the right foot this time. Not his left. In fact, he hit it on the left in the end, and it's gone off the post. Do you know what? I feel a bit disappointed in my players out there today. Unless it's me, and I've just kind of not played the best football in the world, but I do feel that we should have been more convincing than that. I mean, it is what it is. We get the win. We move forward, but fair play to Forest Green. They made that tougher than it should have been, in all honesty, because I felt... That we wasted a lot of our chances today. But fair play. They, I have to commend them. They were brilliant, Forest Green. And uh, we move forward. Okay, well, um, we're about to jump into this one against Wolves. I'm actually going to sim it. I feel like... I know we lost, all right, in a home sim recently to West Brom. But I feel that my team will get the job done. As I say this, I'm, I've got my fingers crossed. Because... I'm not sure. McNeil scores after seven minutes, giving us the lead. So that's a good start. By all accounts. West Brom are beating Chelsea as well, away. I mean, West Brom just seems to be on, a, on that mad one at the moment. An equaliser comes in for Rodrigo. As we make it 2-0 for Relenia getting a penalty. Scoring again in the Premier League. Now for Relenia. I'm in a good episode so far. We make it 3 for Relenia again. What is he on? And then you put in some in his Weetabix on a morning. Clearly, as Darfalu makes it 4. We've just smashed Wolves by 4 goals to 1. Gonzalez gets a consolation just before the end. I will 110% take that. And now we have this one against Atletico to come. It's going to be intriguing to see how this one goes because nobody's expecting us to, to win both games against them in the group. But that's how we find ourselves. If we can get the win here, we will have done the double over Atletico Madrid in our group, which would be pretty crazy to be able to say. So, yeah, I will, uh, I'll see you all in a second once we've picked our team. To be fair, though, I think the team pretty much picks itself, so we won't have too many issues. We've got an injury to Ethan Cox, and I said I was actually going to check out where Short is. I will do that in a couple of moments. Uh, we're going to move Eggerstein onto the bench then, and I did say I might start Kubo up front. In fact, there's one change I am making, and that's Marcelo back in, because it seemed to work with Kieran Tierney at left attacking midfield. So there we go then. Um, are we at home or away for this one? I think we're away. I think we're away in Spain, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're away in Spain for the game against Atletico. So, mm, that doesn't really change too much because I think we still have a job to do as we've got Max Jackson out on loan at Villarreal, yet to play a game. And we've got as well, where is he? Ethan Shaw, there he is. So, he's still on loan at Leicester and he has been playing for them a couple of times as well. How long's left on his deal at Leicester? One year loan? Ah, well, I mean, he's not actually growing and he's not really doing too much unless his form's bad too. So, might have to recall him because he doesn't seem to be really doing too much over there. Nevertheless, let's jump ourselves into this one then. We go to Atletico in Madrid, hoping for a result. <laughs> if we don't get one and they win this game, it is going to make the group incredibly intriguing. And I don't want to be playing this one with the same kits. But we have red. Red on red doesn't really work. So I think I'm going to have to go like that. Let us see what happens when we take them on then. As you can see, the team is ready and we are ready. Let's get it. Are you ready? Because it's about time to get this one off and running. Away in Spain, we've taken the trip. We've flown over and we're here to take the points away from this one too. <laughs> Atletico with a point to prove after the last game. We picked it up with a 1-0 win. Simeone was not happy with the way his side played. He had a few interesting expressions during the game. Let's just put it that way. So he had some kind words again before kickoff for us. So I'm expecting us to do at least the job and give them a tough game tonight. You know, that is the minimum that we expect. And also Weyer's goal against Forrest Green means that he has actually broken his duck. So hopefully we'll see a difference in Weyer tonight. One that's going to cause no end of problems for Atletico as they're in immediately and McNamee saves after eight minutes Lamar over the corner now then quickly put in from Koke they're wasting no time and that's why Sol puts them in front and we've already played less than 10 minutes and already we're seeing that Atletico are about their business tonight 
I had a feeling this would happen. I had a feeling as soon as we started the game off that they were going to take the game to us immediately. And that's what's happened here. Sol puts them in front. <sighs> Peterson's out jumped to the near post. I mean, as if it wasn't already a struggle, things just got harder. Atletico 1, Grimsby Town 0. And do you remember when I spoke at the beginning of today's episode about not being tested? Well, not seeing how we were going to be yet in the Champions League in terms of being tested. Well, now comes it. As we found Ferrari. Ferrari in. Ferrari. Oh, he's put it back. It's a Ferrari. Actually, not bad shooting either. The Italian just doesn't seem to find his feet at the club yet. Got his head down over the strike, but just didn't catch it right at all. And he's gone wide of the post. Oh, Black's going to be so difficult to beat as well. We did it, though. In the last game, we scored in that one. We were 1-0, remember. We can do it again, I believe, in the boys, as we found Weyer. Weyer looks for the run of now Kieran Tierney. He's going to have to have a good game tonight. Here he is. One to the left foot. Turns away. Tierney's ball in. Up gets McNeil. Unable to win the ball, though, sadly, as Tierney tries to bring it under control. Didn't really have time to do that. And uh, we're sadly made to pay because of the fact we've given the ball away now. But at least there's some life in Grimsby Town. Not wanting to sit back and just accept this. We are wanting to go at them. Weyer through to Tierney. Tierney's in. Kieran Tierney for 1-1. One, one. He's in the bar and he's bounced out and McNeil can't finish. Tierney's so close to an equaliser. Ferrari will pick up the ball and hit the shot. He's bounced back for him as well. Tierney's so, so close. Here he is again now, the Scotsman. In towards the area again of Atletico Madrid as Tierney keeps hold of the ball brilliantly. Oh, McNeil doesn't get on that ball. He, was, he allowed the defender to get back. Can't believe Tierney's at the bar. Here is Elena. Peterson. Shane Peterson gets the ball under control, finds Ferrari. Ferrari, he's, he's already had one shot tonight and he didn't convert it as he's forced backwards, but he finds Elena. Elena, oh, I was actually wanting to shoot. I had pressed the button ready for the shot, but I don't know who it was. Just nicked him with a foot and took him off. I took the ball off him. But the breaker 1 0 down. We've had chances in the game. We've struck the crossbar through Kieran Tierney as well. Remember that. And uh, the response has been really good from Grimsby, but we haven't found the equaliser. What does this do to the group then, by the way, as well, if it stays like this? Don't even want to think about that yet. Elena up towards Shane McNeil as the second half begins and gets underway then. And it's pretty much looking like it's going to pick up from where it left off in the first half with us trying to do everything we can to find an equalising goal. Ferrari giving Tierney a run. Comes back towards the Italian. Loses the first one, but keeps hold of the ball still. Still Ferrari. Now Tierney. Gets the ball, edge of the area. Ferrari, quick one, two, potentially with Tierney. The ball does not return back to him, though. I mean, there's a follow-through on Peterson and nothing given. Win back the ball, and we don't get the ball back, though, because of the follow-through that stops him and, and makes him fall over. We're not getting anywhere lee any leeway with this referee, either. That's, that's the frustrating bit about it. We need to get some leeway because not giving us any decisions. And now a bit of problems for us in our box. Lamar backwards, offside given against him. Come on, ref. Time is very, very quickly ticking away here. He's just going so fast. Look back up the clock and 20 minutes have gone past before I'm uh, doing anything again. It's, it's getting a little bit annoying now, but Kubo is in the middle and we will find him through Weyer, but Kubo loses out straight away and that's found its way through as well. How have we gone from potentially breaking on them to them actually having the attack against us? Sukas, they're beaten by Lamar. Headed out, not fully cleared though, and now we will get it out. Here goes Kubo. Come on, boys, we need this. Come on, get it under control, Takefusa. Are you joking me, referee? You are having a laugh right now. What? This is outrageous. Honestly, what is that? Show the challenge again. You better show it. It's not. I'm going to show you this because this is ridiculous. He's just given a free kick for this. Watch this. Here we go. Chris Sukasev against Lamar. Let's watch and see where the free kick is in this one. Nowhere. There's absolutely no free kick there. Before you say it, he's going for the ball. Look, Lamar runs into it. No, it's not a chance. Get away. Get away with it. Peterson, Weyer, Kubo, still Takefusa. Trying to craft the chance still. Kubo towards Alenia. Alenia's in the box. Alenia scores again against Atletico Madrid. And he pulls us back on level terms. Created by Kubo. Finished by Alenia. You have to say he's been the hero of the episode today. That could be a big goal in our quest of qualifying out of this group. I don't even know what to say. 
It looks like it takes a deflection on the way through. Oh my goodness, it's Megdol Black and hit somebody on the way through. And still gone in, get in the back of the net. Elenia's done it again for us. Five minutes to go. We've pulled it back on level terms. And that now hopefully keeps us top of our group. Because I don't even know what would have happened had we have not got that goal back. I don't know what the group looks like at this point. And it's still not done yet because we've just given away, a ball, away the ball with Peterson. I can't even talk right now. I need to concentrate. Then again, we are, what, 37 yards out. So it's a bit far. Alenia towards Sukasev. Big Chris back to Alenia. If we can get a winner here, well, this might be it. It's the only shot blocked. Full-time whistle goes. It wasn't blocked. It was just a shot that didn't convert. And at full-time, it is one apiece out of Spain. I I'm, That game took it out of me. I'm not even going to lie. I think we were actually better side there. Yeah, we just didn't convert our chances, really. Alenia, the man of the moment again, though. And that's going to be it, my friends, for today then. I just I don't know what to really make of that final game against Atletico Madrid. Because if, we, if we're if struggling, our group doesn't really suggest we're going to go far in the competition. I mean, the priority right now has to be getting out of our group. And this is how it looks so far then. Literally point separators. We're top on seven. Leipzig second on six. Atletico third on five. CSKA fourth on four. I mean, there's three points between fourth and first. It is, for me, the group of death, this. I don't believe there's a more difficult group in this one so far. Probably one of the closest ones out there as well. I mean, yeah. Uh, we'll have to pick it up next episode. I think we played what I thought was going to be the toughest um, team in our group, Atletico. Played them twice now, so we don't have to play them again. We've actually beaten drawn with them, and now we've got a take on Leipzig and CSK Moscow again. So... Uh, I'd like to say we get out of the group, but for the moment, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and predict anything because it is all up in air. It's literally points separating the sides, so it's gonna be close. Put it that way, it will be very, very, very close coming out of our group stage. We will see how that one's gonna go. Next episode, we face off against Leipzig, I believe, which we do. We have Newcastle as well in there and Watford, and we've pulled quarter final uh, of uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers in the Carabao Cup, so we're gonna face them again next episode. Our final group stage game coming against CSKA in December. So we're going to see if that one's going to go our way or not. Until next time though, guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode, a like would be greatly appreciated. We got back to winning ways. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the episode went. We got the right result as well. I would have been a bit more disappointed had we have lost to Atletico Madrid, but we got the 1-1 draw, so at least we can say we didn't lose to them in our group stage. So that's one thing to take into account. Um, if you are new around here though and like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below. We upload every single day for you guys to enjoy. And if you uh, want to be notified whenever new videos go live, make sure you have the notification bell turned on too alongside that. Until next time, guys, I will see you all again very, very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Adios!